Here's an amazing question to test your skills interacting with others. Your colleague asks you to help respond with the customer inquiry and indicated that this is an urgent and time-sensitive issue. You're currently working on a project with the tight deadline and remember that when you ask colleague to help you with the project tasks earlier, you didn't receive any help. What should you do? And you're presented with five choices from which you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. Learn to say no. Explain that because you're working on a tight deadline project, you don't want to waste any time. Choice B. Try to help as much as you can. Choice C. Have a conversation with your colleague after your project is completed. Choice D. Try to be respectful and understand another person's point of view. And last but not least is choice E. Escalate the issue to your manager. Take a close look to see what would you choose on the real test as an answer for yourself. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. I believe that this question is about creating a positive environment at work. And this is more than anything an opportunity question. And the main reason is because there is no workplace rule which regulates the situation. So there is no single right or wrong answer and you act voluntarily in this situation. But if you're intentional about creating positive work environment, there is no better way to do it than by building a good relationship with your colleagues. Here's the thought process. You spend a large time of your workday with your colleagues at work and having great relationship in the workplace helps create a lot of positive energy and goodwill. One of the best ways to create friendships and goodwill at work is by helping others to solve their problems, sometimes without expecting anything in return. I would recommend five ways to create positive work environment. Number one, lead by example and sincerely try to help others at work. Number two, be willing to do things that fall outside of your job description. Number three, provide energy to colleagues around you by encouraging and supporting them. Number four, assume positive intentions and trust your colleagues. And last but not least, number five, take pride in the company vision and do what is best for the company and clients. Let's see how those principles can be used to answer this question. Let's first look at essential traits. The key essential traits tested in this question are taking initiative, team orientation, developing your colleagues, as well as leading by examples. There are also four red flags that can be pointed based on your answers. They are defensiveness, lack of goodwill, unnecessary escalation, and creating a drama in the workplace. Based on this, the least recommended answers in order would be choices A and E. Choice A. Learn to say no. Explain that because you're working on a tight deadline project, you cannot waste any time. If you think of helping others as wasting your time, you will not get any positive emotions in their mind and you will not get any brownie points from them. Choice E. Escalating the issue with your manager will show that instead of building relationships at work, you're more interested in creating drama in the workplace. Based on this, I recommend choices B, C, and D. You always have an opportunity to show goodwill and take a first step to build a good relationship. And there's no better way to build friendships and create positive work environment than by leading by example and helping others to solve their problems, sometimes doing it without expecting anything in return. At the same time, you don't want to be burned out and it is always helpful to have a conversation few days after completing the tasks to learn more about your colleagues' work style and to better understand their position. Based on this, my recommended answers are in order. Choice B, try to help as much as you can. Choice C, have a conversation with your colleague after your project is completed. And last but not least, choice D, try to be helpful and understand other person's point of view. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Let's look at the tricky question which does not have the obvious answer. You received a rude email which uses non-professional language from your co-worker. What should you do? You're presented with multiple choices and you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. Wait for 24 hours before responding. Choice B. Reply back with similar tone to show strength. Choice C. Read email carefully 
to ensure you understand the meaning of each sentence. Choice D. Delete the email to eliminate trace and avoid conflict. And last but not least, choice E. Forward email to HR and copy your manager. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe this question tests your ability to control your emotions. When you're receiving unprofessional email, your anger buttons might be triggered and you will get into emotionally elevated state. It is important to maintain professional posture, which would allow you to gain self-respect as well as respect from colleagues, leadership team, and even the sender of the email. Once email is sent, it's impossible to unsend it, and this is the lesson you need to learn for yourself. Because of that, it is typically a good idea to wait before you respond and use this time to learn more about the original message, try to understand sender's intentions, and also try to calm down yourself. Here are some steps on how you can respond to unprofessionally written email. You give another person benefit of the doubt. Reread the original message, analyze it to make sure there is no misunderstanding. Step number two. Try to calm down by doing other activities and ideally waiting overnight. This way your emotions will no longer be elevated when you're sending the response. As a step three, you can try to write multiple versions of the response without sending, compare them and select the best response. And last but not least, in step four, you need to try to stick to professional tone and language in your answer. Here are some of the essential traits assessed in this question. You can pinpoint self-control, patient, thoughtfulness, and giving others benefit of the doubt. Some of the red flags this question can also pinpoint is impulsiveness, which means acting without thinking, as well as using of unprofessional language. Based on this, the least recommended answers in order are choices B, D, and E. Choice B would be replying back with similar tone to show strength. In choice D, you would delete the email to eliminate the trace and avoid conflict. And last but not least, choice E, forwarding email to HR and copying your manager. Based on this, the recommended answers in order would be choices C and A. Responding to rude email in professional way helps you practice patience, enhance your customer service skills, and try to gain self-respect as well as respect from others. It is also an opportunity for you to better understand others and grow as a person. Taking accountability and responding yourself to the message also helps you deal with the issues directly and avoid unnecessarily escalations to HR and to your manager. So my recommended answers here are choice C, read email carefully to ensure you understand the meaning of each sentence, and choice A, wait for 24 hours before responding, would be my most recommended answers. Do you have a better way to solve this challenge? Please make sure to post your answers and rationale in comments. I get a lot of questions on how assessment tests are used in the hiring process. I would like to highlight three important areas companies use assessment tests. They use them for hiring and employment decisions. For example, hiring manager or HR might choose to test the candidate before hiring them to ensure candidate is a good fit for the position. Second way to use it is grow talent inside the organization. For example, some companies use the test before making hiring decisions to promote the candidate. And last but not least, the third way to use it is to determine levels of motivation. For example, if your company is looking to implement a new system or technology, it might be helpful to assess people on their interests and motivation related to this technology. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question, variation of which we frequently see on the test. You clicked on the link in the phishing simulation email. Fortunately for you, it was just a test. During lunch, though, your colleagues are discussing and sharing how they all recognize the phishing email. What would you do? And you're presented with multiple choices that you need to select in order. Choice A. Listen to the rationale and observe behavior of your colleagues. Choice B. Stay strong. It is an informal lunch and you're not required to share anything. Choice C. Share the details of what happened with you and ask for an advice. And last but not least, choice D, make a joke about your own mistake. 
Not an easy question, don't you think? Maybe pause this video to see if you need more time to reread the question and come up with the best possible answers. And on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better ideas and better way to solve it, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. I might be wrong, but I believe this question validates how candidate can learn from mistakes by valuing humility and open communication. This question tests on how much you value open communication and how much you value showing humility to share your own weaknesses and mistakes, potentially gaining respect and improving your relationships with others. I think open communication, even when sharing uncomfortable personal experiences and issues, helps to show you as a human gain better connection with others, and ultimately learn from mistakes more effectively. Here is how this all might be applicable to this particular scenario. During phishing simulations, companies send the realistic phishing email to employees to determine their awareness of cyber attacks. Everyone makes mistakes. The key is to recognize it and learn from the experience to do better next time. You might wonder, why should you value humility and open communication? Let me give you three main reasons. First of all, we learn from failures much more than we learn from successes. And from my standpoint, failure is an opportunity to grow and build mental memory, to recognize the mistakes, to change your behavior in the future, and to come back as a stronger and better person. And last but not least is sharing your mistakes with others, creates an environment of humility where other people feel safe and comfortable sharing their personal stories which, on its own end, helps build strong, well-connected, and high-performing teams. Based on this information, I believe that there are four key essential traits that are assessed in this question. Humility, authenticity, desire to learn, and open communication. There are also some red flags that this particular question can help pinpoint, and those red flags are selective communication, defensiveness, lack of faith in others, as well as lack of initiative and lack of confidence. Based on this, the least recommended answers are choices A and B. Choice A, listen to the rationale and observe behavior of colleagues, is not going to help you grow, is not going to help you become a better person, even though you might hide your mistake. And choice B, stay strong, it is an informal lunch and you're not required to share anything, is complete misconception of what strong means. You will be viewed as a much stronger person if you find courage and strength to share your mistakes and present yourself as a human being. I would recommend answering this question with the choices D and C. Humility, which represents a willingness to admit the weakness and ask for help, makes a person a more effective leader. Everyone makes mistakes, but if you prioritize open communication, you can demonstrate that you are a human being and you can learn from your own mistakes. Making a joke about your own weakness is almost always safe and helps to create a safe environment for other people to share. So I would recommend you select choice D, make a joke about your own mistake, and choice C, share the details of what happened with you and ask for advice as an answer to this question. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure to share your answer and rationale in comments. Here's the very unusual question we ran across on a recent test. Sunita has recently joined the team, and she is a vegetarian. Very frequently, you observe that during team lunches, Sunita feels very uncomfortable around Kevin when Kevin discusses his recent hunting trips in great level of details. What should you do? You need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. Do nothing. There is no issue and even if there is, it should be resolved between Sunita and Kevin. Choice B. You should support Sunita by mentioning to her that it is totally normal since Kevin worked for a company for a long time and always shares his hunting stories. Choice C. You should informally mention to Kevin about Sunita's reactions next time you meet with him one-on-one. -on -one. And last but not least is choice D. You should escalate the issue with your manager. Do you know what you would choose if you presented with such a test? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 15 to 20 seconds, to see if you can come up with the solution. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. What is interesting about this question is that it's not about Sunita and Kevin, 
but rather this is the question about you and how you would behave in this particular situation. Another important factor is that there is no legal or professional requirement on how to behave in this particular situation, because you always have a choices. But this question is designed to analyze your values, and depending upon your values and moral beliefs, you can either play a role of bystander or take actions and try to help. Let's look at the key considerations on how to approach this question. The key questions I would ask is, what would caring leader do in this particular situation? Would leader just observe the issue on the sidelines? Or would the leader take actions and try to interact with the team members to create more positive, safe, friendly, and sympathetic work environment? To create a healthy and productive workplace, it is extremely important to create a community at work. A modern view of the effective work environment highlights creation of the community at the workplace. Creation of the community invites deeper level of belongings for the members and helps improve the engagement, improve commitment and productivity in the workplace. Let's look at the five key elements on how you can create a community at the workplace. Number one, you should focus on developing the culture of inclusion. You also should understand and appreciate the diversity and try to engage different people with different viewpoints into your team. You should also strengthen team bonds, promote team building, and one of the good ways to do it is complete joint activities together. For example, you can eat lunch, socialize at work and or after work, and do other joint activities. What's important to understand is that diversity and inclusion is more than just a policy at the workplace. The population is rapidly changing and people employed in the organization are changing with this. The population of people employed in organizations is changing and people with different backgrounds enter the workforce. The key benefit of having diversity and inclusion is that equitable employees outpace their competitors by respecting unique needs and variety of perspectives of all team members. The benefits of diversity and inclusion can be summarized by higher productivity at work, increased employee engagement and trust, new perspectives and innovation, better decision-making inside and outside of the organization, and stronger business results and profits. Understanding all of these aspects help us understand the traits tested on this test. The essential traits are doing the right thing and taking action as a leader, understanding cultural differences as well as sincere appreciation of the diversity. Let's analyze key choices and considerations when answering the question. You're presented with the choice to be a bystander and do nothing, but you also can do a right thing as a leader even though it might be uncomfortable. You can also try to maintain the status quo and just come down Sunita by telling her that it is okay since it always was like that. You can also behave as a true leader and show true appreciation of diversity and inclusion benefits. You can take uncomfortable step and grow as a leader yourself, which would help attract and keep the pipeline of talented team members into the organization. So what are the red flags that this question helps to uncover? Number one is it helps uncover people that try to maintain status quo versus being a change agent. It also helps detect people that are uncomfortable in promoting the change. You can also detect people that are being afraid of conflict that is required for the change. And also you can eliminate people that have lack of understanding of diversity and inclusion principles. Let's look at considerations for the internal compass of the person answering the question. It is almost effortless to take the easy route and behave in politically correct way, but you can also take a lead and do the right thing. The true leader always goes with what heart is telling her and him and does the right thing. In addition, by mentioning to Sunita that she should get used to it because it is always the way it was, you will not be able to comfort her since she most likely will continue to be uncomfortable. Leaders often play a role of the change agent in the organization and are not afraid of the conflict that might be required for a change. Based on this analysis, I think the choices to avoid are choices A, B and D. Choice A, do nothing. There is no issue and even if there is, it should be resolved between Sunita and Kevin. Choice B, you should support Sunita and mention to her 
that it is totally normal since Kevin worked for a company for a long time and always shared his stories. And last but not least choice to avoid is choice D. You should escalate the issue with your manager. I know you might disagree, but I am of the opinion that there is nothing here in this situation that might require manager engagement. Based on this analysis, I think that the recommended answer here is choice C. The goal of every organization is to create a safe, positive and caring work environment where team members feel comfortable, enjoy working together and have opportunity to reach their full potential. Some issues can't be solved through organizational policies or escalations to the managers, but rather those issues require a help from true leaders who understand cultural differences, appreciate diversity and are not afraid to speak up and share their opinion. Based on this, I think the recommended answer here is choice C. You should informally mention to Kevin about Sunita's reaction next time you meet with Kevin one-on-one. -on -one. The assumption here is that Kevin will recognize the uncomfort he is causing to Sunita and will stop sharing the stories when Sunita is present. Do you have any other suggestions on how to answer this question? Please make sure to post them in comments. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an interesting question you frequently see on the test. Manager called you into her office and shared with you the complaint she received about you browsing non-business related sites in the workplace. You did use company's equipment to download some materials from the internet recently. What will you do next? And you need to select all that apply in order. Choice A. I would ask manager to provide evidence and learn more about who filed the complaint. Choice B. I will explain what I did and what I was looking for. Choice C. I would apologize. Choice D. I would take responsibility for my actions. Take a close look, maybe pause this video for 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you my version. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. What's interesting about this question is that this particular one doesn't have a single obvious answer. There are multiple complex aspects that are tested in this question. And even though there is no obvious answer to this challenge, the solution might be guided based on the listed considerations. Let's look at each one of them. The first one is that organizations monitor computer use and corporate network activities. Companies have full legal right to monitor email as well as the sites employees go to. Companies discourage personal use of the computers by employees for many different reasons. And there are special policies on accessing inappropriate content using company's equipment. The tricky part of this question is that this particular one tests candidate's knowledge and understanding of these policies, and more importantly, how candidate would behave under the circumstances. Let's look at the personal use of the business equipment first. Companies typically provide computers for use to their employees but there are a lot of challenges with personal use of the business equipment. There are also consequences for using it to conduct inappropriate business activities. So what are the typical personal uses of companies' computers? We can list five main categories. Make online purchases, send personal email, playing games on company's computer, downloading non-work-related materials, and downloading and installing non-work-related software. There are typically special policies for inappropriate content on business computers. In inappropriate or unauthorized content can be grouped into five main categories. Number one, content promoting hate based on race, religion, disability, sexual preference, and etc. Content promoting violent extremism, sexually explicit content, real or simulated violence, as well as last but not least, pirated software which is the software you don't have legal license for. This question is very challenging because there is no one certain answer, but there are some important considerations if you look at the question definition. Number one, there is certainly a possibility for mistake and misunderstanding here, but if manager called employee for a discussion, 
there was probably enough evidence of wrongdoing that has been collected. Number two, since organizations own the equipment and network access, company has full legal right to monitor the employee. Understanding policies before accessing content should guide employee decisions. And last but not least is that inappropriate access can be detected by computer monitoring tools as well as reported by coworker. I believe in this particular question, candidate is tested on four essential traits, honesty, trustworthiness, professional behavior, and in compliance with company policies. This question only implies that employee downloaded content and doesn't indicate if the content was appropriate or not. It only shows non-business related sites in the workplace, which does not necessarily indicate an inappropriate content. Another important consideration is that there is always a possibility for a mistake and misunderstanding like with everything in life. Role of an employee here is to provide facts and support the investigation. And the best strategy is to know the policies before using company's equipment and to follow those policies. Based on the listed answers, there are certain red flags that employee is tested for. Number one, employee becoming defensive. Number two, attempts to hide what happened. And number three, attempts for revenge with someone who reported the employee. Based on these red flags, I think the least recommended answer is choice A. I would ask manager to provide evidence and learn more about who filed the complaint. And here is my recommendation for the most recommended answer. I believe that the goal here in this question to demonstrate leadership and take responsibility for your actions. And this is true not just in question but in life as well. If you did something unknowingly, not knowing if it is prohibited by the policy, it is always a good idea to apologize. So my recommended answers in order I choice D, I would take responsibility for my actions. Choice B, explained what I did and what I was looking for. And then last but not least, choice C, I would apologize. Do you have a better solution for this question? Please make sure to post your answers as well as thought process in comments. Thanks for watching. If the content was helpful, please give us a like and consider subscribing. This is the way for you to tell us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it for you in the future. For links and resources referenced in this video, please check the description. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to find what you're looking for and download the materials. We really thank you for your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.